Hi everybody and big welcome to CDH TV with a set review of the Warhammer 40k collaboration between Wizard of the Coast and Games Workshop. We are going to be looking at 94 cards of 168. We will continue to do part 2 and maybe part 3 when more cards are being released. This is part 1. Now I'm not a super huge fan of Games Workshop. You know, while we're at it, let me show you some stuff. I'm actually a 40k player myself. Here is uh, my wave serpent. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's an elder transport. Um, sadly, my, the race that I play isn't really presented yet with cards, but we'll see if we get some high space elves from the set. I do have some space marines in my basement, I haven't really played them in a while, I don't play that much 40k anymore. I've actually moved over to a completely different miniature war game called Malifaux, but that's a completely different story. But I have been playing 40k for a long while, so we are going to touch lore and things in the set review as well. So first up we have the Swarm Lord, we actually already looked at the Swarm Lord in a previous set review, he accidentally just happened to be there. It's not great, you draw cards whenever a creature with counters on it dies and that's not great. This is a Tyranid, this is a Surg, but not really a Surg, it's a hive mind insect kinda everything bio creature this is more or less how the miniatures actually look like as you can see they are not really circlings or they're not really aliens from the alien versus predator kind of series they are different but they still have the same hive mind uh, thing and i don't see that here they seem to be tamer so far in any case moving on we have mono black necrons Sarakef the Silent King, flying, that is correct, the miniature in 40k actually has flying. My Will Be Done, that is also an ability they actually have in the 40k game. Whenever Sarakef the Silent King attacks, mill three cards, you may put an artifact creature or we have a card from among those cards, mill this way into your hand. That's card draw in a very bad way. Or well, it's like, it's not that bad. It's like an anticipate, kinda, on attack. A little bit too weak, only one color and that's black and that is not enough. I don't think he's that great. He's good, but not g good enough. Moving on, we have Inquisitor Greyfax, Esper. Four mana for a Vigilance. Other creatures you control get plus one attack and Vigilance. Hunt for Heresy, one mana tap, tap target creature and opponent control, investigate. That is Cardra, but very slow Cardra. I kinda like it, but it doesn't feel good enough. Like, it's a commander you could build a deck out of that is sacrificing clues and drawing cards, interacting with attackers. But in the end, I kinda want more. You're basically paying three mana to draw a card and you can only do it once each turn. Now we're getting into something that I actually think is pretty good. So it's four colors and Tiamer, Magus Luse Cain. This is a human tyrannid wizard, and that might sound strange. This model is actually from the Yeen Stealers cult. Remember those tyrannids? These are humans that have been, uh, well, mating without their consent. Well, the aliens have been mating. You know what, when you get into 40k lore, it's not PC anymore. Let's just say that it's a mix between a human and a Tyranid, and it's the Tyranid who decided to create these things. So they are fighting together with the Tyranid, they view Tyranids as gods, and they are very... Well, you don't view them as infected Terrans, you know, Starcraft had Zerg and Terrans, and in there you had infested Terrans, kinda similar but not the same. In any case, this creature has a spiritual leader at the beginning of combat on your turn, with the plus one counter on target creature, that's cute, however, then we have Psychic Stimulus, tap add two colors when you cast the next spell with X in its mana cost, or activated ability with an X in its activated cost this turn, copy that spell or ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. So we have things like Final of Devastation, that this could copy and clone, that's great, Pull from Tomorrow, that's also good and then we have things like walking ballista as you can read here a copy of a permanent spell becomes a token so you create a token of the walking ballista 
And then we have Code of Calling and more. In, in, in the end, there is a bunch of X spells in CDH that we kinda play because they are kinda decent overall. And this commander will just upgrade those spells. Now a big problem with this commander is that it's a 4 CMC, kinda slow. And it's not like gonna take over the game or do something explosive. But overall it will be pretty decent. I honestly kind of like it and I think it could make some more X spells be a little bit more playable. But in the end, not over the top, it's not gonna change the metagame in any form of way, it's gonna be like a high power potential commander that you could win a game or two within some CDH pods. Maybe I should explain the Necron lore, that's a very long one. Ah, this is not a Warhammer 40k lore channel, I will touch a few parts here and there, but the Necron lore is very deep, so we're, we're skipping out on that one. First up we have Pharaoh, whenever one or more artifact cards leave your graveyard, create two black Necron Warrior artifact creature tokens, cute, grand, strategies at the beginning of combat on your turn, another target artifact creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains a menace until end of turn, this is tokens, this is uh, boosting creatures here and there, it's very bad in CDH, not good. Prince of Chaos, when Balkir, the Dragon Mas Dark Master enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and lose X life where X is another of demons you control. Then Lord of Torment, whenever the other demon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to the power to any target. So it has card draw, it has interaction, however at an extremely high mana cost. The concept is kinda good, except that you're required to play demons suddenly it's bad second you're like the mana cost is just too bad so it's like yeah it works but tribal demon never the mana cost never in the end maybe as a strong casual deck might do something moving forward now we actually have something that could be great and obviously it's a space marine so of course it's good Marnus Kalgar Esper, white, blue and black and two generic, so a total of five, double strike, Astartes Warrior. Master Tactician, whenever one or more creature took whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Shap the master, pay six, create two, 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 white Astartes Warrior creature tokens with vigilance and it's a free five. So a very cool part here is whenever one or more tokens enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. It doesn't specify what kind of token. So Smothering Tide will be pretty amazing with this guy. You get a treasure and then you get to draw a card. That's amazing. I'm really happy he's not red so you can't play Ragavan with him. But in, in, the, in the end, things that just create treasures will be great with this guy. But he can basically win the game with infinite mana because you can create infinite 2-2s two and then draw your entire deck and from here you just need to sculpt a perfect 7 or just remove all your opponent's permanents. Like cause Cyclonic Rift Overload, remove everything your opponents have and then just keep a hand of 7 counter spells and an enormous board state past turn and in your next turn you attack with infinite 2-2s two and win the match. So I really like this guy. I definitely think you could see some action inside CEDH. I don't know his complete power level yet. Very hard to say. He's a bit expensive, like 5 mana, that is actually quite a lot. He's a enormous dude though. 3-5 with double strike, so I can really see the mana cost here. A card draw ability that is a passive ongoing ability. You don't really need to do anything. It will always trigger now and then. But then you can just pay mana to draw cards and create dudes. He's definitely CDH viable in some form of way. But let's move on, we have a lot of cards to look at. Old One Eye is actually a character, like a unique Tyranid character. Other creature in control health trample. You create a 5-5 green Tyranid creature token. At the beginning of the upkeep, you discard two cards. If you do return Old One Eye from a graveyard to your hand, six mana. Like a, it's a very strong creature for other formats, but for CDH it's a pretty weak thing. So and trope. These are psionic creatures with psychic abilities that use attacks. Warp Blast, that's actually a, a psychic ability attack they have in the game. When Soanthrope enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to any target. Yep, yeah, I can see that. So this will also enter and become a clone thing. 
Like in the end, not that great for CEDH, will probably be pretty good. Like it could be a pretty good casual deck together with this, but for CEDH you want something different. We have more Tyranids with more... We all lands have tap, add one mana of any color and lose all other abilities. That's mana fixing for your opponents. Not good. Reach, death touch, four mana for a 2-4. Honestly, too weak. Sorry to say that a lot of cards we're looking at are not that good for CDH, but that's just the truth of it. Here is another Tyranid Human Ward. Now, by the way, like, let me actually explain something. So we have Human here, Tyranid Human. However, if you scroll down here, we have Arstatus Warrior. The thing is that Space Marines are, or Arstatus here, are modified humans into superhumans. They have, for example, two hearts to begin with. As an example, Captain America from Marvel, he's like a modified superhuman. Our starters are way more modified. They are probably 10 times as strong as Captain America. Or let's just say 10 times more cyborg compared to him. So our starters are no longer humans or, well, they technically are humans, but not really. They are more superhumans. So this thing has ward, three, automon, whenever another source you control deals exactly one damage to a permanent or player, he will deal two damage to that permanent or player. That's kind of cool. I like it, but it's not good. The idea with this is that you play these, there are a bunch of creatures that you tap and you deal one damage to a target creature player and with him you go pew 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 and that's uh, cute i have actually seen a casual deck do something like that so that could be cool but you're only really good at like at interacting with creatures you're very creature oppressive I, I i honestly like it but i don't think it's gonna be good nowhere near uh, cdh viable in my opinion because you need to interact with more things than creatures and this is only gonna interact with creatures or and you can't even draw cards with this guy so no He's cheap though, but not that good. Biophagus. Nah, it, we have better mana dorks. Oh, I remember this creature. I've played against it so much. It's a living weapon. This is a good example of how the living weapon, the Tyranids actually work. You see, they, that's, that gun on top of its back is actually part of its own structure. Bioplasmic Barrage. When this creature enters, but it is X damage to each player and each other creature. No. Oh, it's a board wipe. It can can trip if you pay, what is that, 8 mana into it? That's way expensive. And you will deal 5 damage to all your opponents and... Nah, not good. Too expensive. It could be good in casual when you have like enormous amounts of mana and you just explode. So that could work, but I'm, I'm not a huge fan. This one is actually kind of good, but it should have flash. Scavenge the dead. When this thing enters the battlefield, exile target plays graveyard. That's good. That's graveyard interaction. Put the plus one counter on this thing for each creature card exiled this way. And they don't get the cards back in any form of way. If this would have had flash, it could have interacted the instant speed versus graveyard strategies in a better way. It doesn't have flash, so you have to interact in your main phase, which is just too slow and too insecure. Because usually people go cost and tomb, reanimate Rasakef at the same time, so you never have the options to actually do anything with this thing. So in the end, it's not that good. But what it does is kinda on the point what you need. It's like interaction in a bad way. Goliath truck, what is this? Stowage, whenever Goliath truck attacks, but Okay, no, it's bad. <laughs> what was that? This is actually pretty good. Atalan Yakel, so motorcycle riders. That is correct. That's what they had in the game. Trample Haste, you cause it instantly. Skilled Outrider, this is where things get good. When this thing deals combat damage to a player, you may search your library for a basic land card, put in the play that if it tapped, then shuffle. I like it. It's not good for CDH, but I do like it. It's a cool effect that should see more versions in Magic. And I could I could see a CDH deck include this just because they like it as well. I don't think it's something you should include, but it's a cool card. I like it for casual reasons. There are so many weird things here. Just too expensive. Scream Killer, Tyranid, Spore Cast, Tyranid, Termagon Swarm, same thing. Shadow in the Warp. What is that? The first creature spell you cast each turn costs two less to. Ooh! Whenever it costs their first non creature spell, it's in Shadow in the Warp. Ooh! 
Ooh, I kind of like... Like, it's not that bad, honestly. Whenever the opponent costs their first non creature spell each turn, Shadow will lose from that player. If this would be every single time they cost a non creature spell, they take two damage. This would be great, because it would be an interaction versus storm strategies. Very popular in CDH in general. People are often winning the game, but just costing spells over and over and this could be a great way to interact with that it's not doing that because he's just triggering once so that's sad i don't see a reason why it wouldn't trigger several times maybe we're too good for the free cmc still though but also the first creature spell you cast each turn costs two less to cost i do like that i i could i could see this card seeing maybe some play in some cdh decks it's not over the top not game changing but in the end it's not bad and it's something you could play i guess but i i don't know if i would recommend anyone actually playing it though the red terror oh the red terror i remember the red terror uh it was a weird creature that could like ambush things across the battlefield and such whenever red source you control deals damage to one or more permanents or players put a plus one counter on red terror yeah no that's not great this is not what it did in the game by the way really it should have deep strike i don't know how they're gonna create it, it should have flash that's what it should have flash it would be weird but that's what it should have the red terror i guess that's also why it's the mono red doesn't feel right but it's fine more x spells like you will create an amazing tyrannid deck with this as the commander like tyrannid tribal will be vi will be a f will be possible for casual after the set release 100 percent i do like that though evolve more tyrannid should have evolve other kitchen control have evolve and yeah that's that's how you get more tyrannids having evolve <laughs> the card sold what i asked for now we're getting into the demons this is definitely a slanish here's the keeper of secrets these creatures are badass they are very strong first strike in haste yeah that is very fitting for slanish they actually have the first strike in the 40k game whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand keeper of secrets deals damage equal to that spells mana value to target opponent if this would have creature it could almost could have oh yeah <laughs> eh, almost be something but it doesn't and it's very expensive so no very cool card like the keeper of secrets demons should be expensive lucius the eternal haste armor of shrieking souls when lucius the eternal dies excited and shoots target creature on opponent controls when that creature leaves the battlefield return lucius excited from the battlefield <laughs> that's kind of cool he just keeps coming back i like it but it's not good Arstatus warrior so he's obviously a chaos worshipper for those that don't know they, they are space marines that basically revolt against the emperor that is not a good guy by the way the emperor is probably equally evil to the demons in my opinion space marines are not good guys oh well let me just point out this they are no good guys in 40k everyone is evil no one is pc everyone is like pro war everyone is a form of cultist like every single miniature in 40k is a cultist in some form of way so lucius the eternal is not a bad guy in comparison to where is he we looked at him previously they've like the big space marine he they are probably equally evil i I would say people will argue that space marines aren't that bad but they are bad guys in other aspects of it but in any case uh, not that good uh, cute and cool I, I like the gimmick but it's not good let the galaxy burn <laughs> i love that name i mean <laughs> they're solving this is gonna be awesome i'm letting the galaxy burn i'm casting let the galaxy burn okay let the galaxy burn deals x damage plus two for each creature that didn't enter the battlefield this turn oh it's it's like an inv i see it's an innovation thing so you put a bunch of creatures into play then you cast this and you board wipe everything except the things you cause it that's why it synergizes with cascade too so you cause the creature or you cause this you cascade into a creature the creature comes into play because it resolves before the cascade and then let the galaxy burn resolves and you don't hurt your creature that you just caused it with the cascade i like it it's very expensive very bad and don't play it in cdh but it's very cool like it's very very cool 
Kill, maim, burn. So, so chaos. I like it, but too expensive. Everything in this set is just too mana expensive. Aspiring champ. I think I know why they don't want this to be too like good. Because if this, this set accidentally becomes like good, it could see play in like legacy. And I have a feeling they don't want these cards to appear in legacy. So they have to make them very expensive or very non-legacy desired, so to say. And that's... I kind of like that. Like, it's, it's good for casual, but it won't, like, get into the rest of the game, so to say. When a spying champion deals combat damage to a player, sacrifice it. If you do, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put a card onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest into your library if the creature is a demon. Is oh, I like it. Oh, this is from the um, World Eaters, I think. No, Word eat Word, word Eaters. My favorite chaos uh, chapter, actually, but not good. It's like a polymorph thing, but it's like polymorph is a thing in CDH, but you don't play creatures inside those decks. And this is a creature that's going to be in the way from it. So it's like a cool card you could play in like big stompy demon decks. And there could definitely be casual decks that are doing that, but it's not good for CDH. Nothing in this set is good for the CDH. Magnus the Red. Instant Sorcerer spell that you cast consequence lets to cast for each creature that took in you. Ooh, huh. That's interesting. Whenever Magnus the Red is combat to a play, create a. Huh. He's actually kind of interesting. He's not like great. He's not good but he's like have potential like reducing costing cost of instant sorceries is actually pretty good but you do it if you have tokens he is producing tokens and it has to be creature tokens like it can't be treasure tokens if he could actually count the treasure tokens that could be pretty amazing but i don't think this will carry a great cedh deck to victory honestly hmm i do like it a lot i like the design this is it's a very cool concept could be a fun deck too but it's not good it it will it will struggle to play out and do its cool thing like there are so many things you need to do in order for this creature to actually properly work. So what in the world is this? In a case, sacrifice. Like the next spell you cast have cascade. Could this be good? It feels like this could be good. Wait, you don't need to sacrifice this thing. Uh, I'm torn. I don't think this is good, but I don't think it's bad either. It's a little bit weird. It's a bit expensive too. I think there are better value engines in CDH. This is a value engine. It's also a way to trick things into play. Like you're cheating mana cost. That, that's good. So I, I, I do like it, but I, I don't see... In the end, I think there is better cards. Pink Horrors! Yeah, this is doing what Pink Horrors always does. Never cost an instant source spell to damage to an... It's just too expensive. Like, it's doing cool things, but it's just too expensive. Lord of Change! This is the big Scenic God... Not God. Uh, asp, like, big Scenic Demon. Draw three cards. Yeah, that's what it does. Ward, it actually has... It should have Ward. They have an, a very strong Invulnerable save. Not gonna explain what Invulnerable save is. Great Unclean 1. I have a feeling this should be Golgari. But I also have a feeling they don't want like all of the great gods they are four great demon gods great and no not great and clean one nurgle Sinch, corn and slanish we've currently looked at everyone but corn and they've all been monocolored so far so i can see why they're doing that at the beginning of your end step each opponent lose two life then for each opponent who lost life this way create a one free black demon creature token named play barrier of nurgle okay who uh, so the toughness is too low if, and uh, this is not really doing what I imagine Nurgle doing. Nurgle is very durable, extremely durable. They should have things like, not ward, that is a siege thing, but they should have enormous toughness. Regeneration, the regeneration you have in magic, or a different version of that, a similar version. Something that is making them not take that much damage, basically. I can think of many different... Like, prevent all combat damage dealt to Great Unclean One, or prevent half of the combat damage... Prevent half of the combat damage dealt to Great Unclean One feels pretty on point what they should be doing, but that's not good. This is not good either. 
but yeah i just want to put my opinion on what cards should do hell brute cool we can cast it from a graveyard uh, chaos uh, demonic engine our status dreadnought artifact creature yeah this is correct this i like it but it's not good this set doesn't feel that good over there have been a few cards like it maybe two commanders so far if an opponent will gain life that player lose that much life instead hmm that's good but it's too expensive it's also not good enough this entire set is very expensive nurgles on script put target creature card from opponent's grade on the battlefield we saw it now bad we've seen that one before or we've seen versions of that before pox walkers nurgle is by the way my favorite uh, chaos demon they are so grotesque i love it Ugh. When uh, whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, return. Yeah, this feels Nurglish, more or less. Death touch, though, I don't know about that. Yeah, we're kind of actually when I think about it, they have poison some of them sometimes. It's it's fine. I I yeah 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 I like him. It's fine. Dark Apostle. The next non-creature spell you cast this turn have Cascade. Ooh, so we already looked at the creature that demands sacrifice. The next non-creature spell you cast this turn has Cascade. The other creature, the black one that we did look at, that is down here. Here, the man had yet to sacrifice creature. No, the next creature spell you cost this turn up. I missed that. That is making this very bad. However, this one, where is it? Uh, Dark Apostle. I I do like it. Once again, I think there are better card drawing engines in the game, but still, I'm gonna say I like it. Not too bad. Like, it's a strange value engine that you could play. Oh, you can exile opponent's creatures, of course. Still too expensive, too, still too weak. Not good. Blood first there. Here's the corn avatar of the corn god. This is the... Wait a minute. Ah, oh, they're not doing green. They're doing Grixis. So both corn and Slanish. We looked at Slanish before. Slanish is mono red, the keeper of secrets. That's Slanish. And corn is also mono red. I'm fine with that. Basically Grixis colors. That's that's good. Whenever blood first deals combat damage to a player, untap it after this combat. So yeah, this is very typical blood firster. He can't attack a player. It has already attacked this turn. Wait a minute. Oh my god. This is wait, this is actually good. You're gonna get so many combat steps that he doesn't have haste. If this had haste. Oh, this could have been really great. So there is a... Oh my god, wait a minute. This is kind of a potential Venota card, honestly. You're gonna get... You, you attack with this, you win. If you have Venota in play. Straight up. I do like it. You're gonna get so many Venota triggers with this. And it's not even bad without the commander of Venota. Because normally with Venota, you have so many creatures... That this could basically turn into a wing con, more or less, as you're just gonna beat your opponents down pretty fast. Because you can spread things out, and you can, like, this thing can attack one thing, and all of the other creatures can attack another thing, and then you just kill players left and right. Yeah, I like it. I f honest, I'm not a huge Venota player myself, but I, I think this could be a card for Venota. Now, if you're wondering why these greater demons aren't legendary is because they are not unique they are the biggest demon version that the chaos gods could produce but they are not unique chaos mutation yay it's actually good it's great it's a polymorph spell in instant speed exile any number of creatures controlled by different players you can only you can choose to con target four or well up to the amount of players or you just target one which is your own creature basically and you polymorph that creature uh, but you can polymorph other creatures and that's very key because the strategy is that you have one creature inside your entire deck that is usually a win con creature for you you win the game if that one resolve if you, you win the game if that creature comes into play and you just polymorph your commander the cool thing about this spell is that you can polymorph hate bears among around the table so you're putting your wing con into play and you're removing interaction at the same time with one card and that's great it's also in instant speed so you can do this in your last opponent's end step or you could potentially depending on what creature you're putting into play win an instant speed i absolutely love it i am 100 certain this is gonna see play inside polymorph strategies so I like it. I, I really like it. I, I really want Polymorph to be more of a thing too because it's a very cool concept. 
Corn the Betrayer. It's a, such a weird thing. Yeah, he. The reason he's called Corn the Betrayer is because when he goes into combat inside the game, there's a chance he attacks your own creatures. So therefore, he is the Betrayer. I I kind of like how they smolder that into it. He's a bad. He's a group hug card because you will send it over to someone else, and then you go draw cards. But then that person will have him taking damage, and he will go to another player, and he will run around on the battlefield giving card draw to everyone unless you can do a trick with like homeward path giving returning him back to your hand and honestly that could be kind of cool like homeward path and you have a value engine that is weird but uh, <laughs> yeah i don't like it cool but i don't like it chaos defiler this is a very cool creature in the game this is actually how it looks like it's like a scorpion with a big battle cannon in its mouth or in its big belly the head is like on top of that thing and then there's a the belly it has scorpion claws it's actually pretty scary in close combat it's not good in close combat it's not a good model in, in, in general either by the way it's a little bit too all around it's look doing a little bit of everything which is making it bad but in any case it's a very cool model it's also demon by the way it's a demon construct so it's actually possessed it's it's not a living biological thing it's driven by a demon and a demon only which is also making it amazing when the filer enters the battlefield or dies for each opponent choose a non-land permanent that play control destroy one of them chosen at random not good sadly Okay, now we have a bunch of Necrons. Leash Guard! Return all legendary creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. No, too expensive. I don't need it. Not that good. Necron Wizard. Whatever this or another non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard or exiled from the battlefield, target will lose life in UK. There is another card that is doing a similar thing. Vault of Disciples or something. I think I have this model, by the way, somewhere. Probably in the basement. It's a very cool model. It's, um, it's good. You can have this in your deck. It's um, there's a chance Disciple of the Vault will be better, but this is a card you could play. Like it's just replacing, or yes, it's another version of another card that already exists. Nothing bad with it. That Death Touch. As long as this infinite is on the battlefield, it has all activated. Oh no! Of all artifact cards in your graveyard, it's not good enough. No, it's not great. So there's this card called Necro Necrotic Ooze. That is. Just honestly better, I think, or work. So this is great, but it's not good because it's too expensive. What it is doing is absolutely amazing. You can transform this into like a one card combo because you can have, uh, what's the name? You know, the, there are artifacts that tap for mana and then there's artifacts that untap for mana. So he can make infinite mana and it's not that hard to achieve that. You just need to put random artifacts into your graveyard. You cast this thing and you give him haste somehow and then you win somehow. I could see him being a commander and he could probably work out fine. There's a bunch of different artifacts in colorless colored entity that will win the game with him. The only problem I have with him is his mana cost that is making me just a little bit ineffective. And it's just one color as well. If he had more colors and a lower CMC cost, he could be an amazing commander, honestly. I really like the card and I really wish this would be stronger. Maybe there's a spot for him inside some very strange 99, but I don't think that either. I think you build a deck around this thing with him as the commander, but it's just too much. It's just too, too much gimmicks. Just too much to do. Now we have something. Creatures you control are artifacts in addition to their other types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you lose one life and you create a black Necron work artifact creature token. Shouldn't this be called... What's the... I don't suddenly remember what the technology they use to become artifacts. So short, short, not gonna go into the lore, I promise, I promise. Necrons were biological creatures creatures that created our living metal and became robots so they were like us similar humans and they are now robots and they have free will by the way they are they were mind controlled by these things the sea tons or katans or people of different but then they broke free and they gained their own will back and they basically imprisoned these uh, star gods 
regardless, biotransference is basically what they did. They changed their flesh into metal and the metal can heal. Self-repair, like it's melting back together. You've seen some Marvel action movies that is doing that. Uh, in any case, feature control artifacts. There's, this should be something here that this actually... This should be CDH viable in some way. Creatures you control artifacts in addition to that type. Same is true for creature spells you control. And I don't see it right now. I don't... I also, if there is a way to make this card CDH viable, there are probably better strategies out there. Making everything you have into artifacts is... First off, gonna feed Dockside heavily. That's bad. Legendary artifact creature Necron. Whenever this thing attacks, you may cast an artifact spell from your hand or grave it by paying life equal to its mana value and another mana cost. I like it, but it's very expensive. Like the big trick here is that you cast Vola Citadel without paying mana for it. And that's good, but it's not good enough. Like, if you can cost this thing for 5 mana, you can cost Black uh, Bola Citadel already. So I don't see the point. And that's it. We've looked at a bunch of really strange cards. Most of them are very expensive, very stompy, and they're honestly really bad. There are two cards that stick out. Magas, Kane. I think it has potential. I don't think it's gonna be super busted. High power, definitely. And then we have this guy that I actually think is gonna be pretty amazing. This is like a CDH viable commander that is very expensive. Five mana is a lot, but there's a cool card draw function there. There's a cool way to gain infinite mana. He has a grindy activated ability that can draw cards. He will work great with terrain grounds. So I like him. I like... Do I like this set? I like 40k, so I probably like this set. I, in fact, I like 40k so much that I've actually made my own YouTube channel where I upload battle reports of 40k matches. But once again, I've actually transitioned over and started to make Malifaux battle reports instead. I prefer that game in general. I'm a big miniature wargaming player, so if you're interested in that sort of stuff, link in the description below of the video. Welcome to hang out here as well, checking out some cool, awesome miniature battles. I'm trying to go for a faster approach, so to say. Most 40k battle reports are one hour long or more. I'm trying to go for something at 15 minutes. Similar to how I do my Magic the Gathering gameplay. It's also being quite fast. In any case, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you liked the video. And in the future, we're gonna have part 2 and maybe part 3 of more card reviews coming up from the Warhammer 40k collaboration with Wizards of the Coast. Until then, take care guys, I'll see you next time.